Alright, we're gonna give uh, Adira from uh, PSL is gonna give a few words. Uh, Adira is a powerful organizer, community advocate. Thank you, Adira. everyone again my name is Andera and I'm an organizer with the PSL unfortunately we're here again to mourn, an, mourn another child Micaiah Brandt who was killed by Columbus Ohio police shortly after the guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin and what really gets me is when I was 14 years old I got into a fight and like Micaiah I had a knife and flung it towards the person I was fighting with the police were called and I remember feeling cornered by them the person I was fighting with just everyone at that moment not that I actually wanted to harm myself or them, but I wanted to be left alone. I also wanted to be taken seriously because as a young black girl, I knew even then, everything had to be a fight. And although I didn't have the language, I knew that was the only option the system had ever given me. Luckily, I survived my first encounter with police with a night in jail and community service. And I've been thinking a lot about what Floyd's brother said after the verdict. And I quote, we always have to understand we have to march. We have to do this for life because this seems like a never ending cycle. I'm not just fighting for George anymore. I'm fighting for everyone around the world. And Floyd's brother was right. And it was a telling statement of the time that we're in today. A never ending cycle. Everything about it, including the complicated feelings we all have being here today about the verdict and how police terror still exists. And as the verdict was being sent, a 16 year old girl was brutally murdered. They handed Chauvin to us as a concession. Only seven police officers have been convicted of murder since 2005, despite the thousands of people they have killed during this time. An, excep an exceptional moment caused by the system to make an exception to the rule of immunity of police terror. It served the ruling class to put him on trial as an individual to serve their ideology. And we must reject the liberal narrative that even Nancy Pelosi has put out there that George, quote unquote, sacrificed himself. <laughs> to do what, Nancy? To save America? To save the criminal justice system? So I'm asking everyone here today, what's your ideology? What is our way to liberation? And we can't constantly keep on mobilizing, killing after killing. We need actual organization. So when things slow down in the street, work is still being done. And why hasn't Rhode Island moved from mobilization to organization? All last year we were told that once a Democrat is in the house, things will get better. And it hasn't. We've tried it their way for too long and, and reformism is a way to get us off the streets. Even here locally, no matter how well-intentioned a local councilman or woman or governor may be, what changes, what changes can they make in this broken system or stop police from killing our children? Yeah. So we need to continue to fight. When they kill a Micaiah or a Brianna, we need to raise up some Masada Shakurs and some Fannie Lou Hammers. <laughs> and we don't die, we multiply. We multiply our efforts through struggle and building. And this is what we have to do now. Continue building because justice doesn't fall from the sky. And as good as it feels that Derek Chauvin being sentenced feels, the struggle continues. We still need justice for Dante Wright. We need to reopen all the past cases and we need the floodgates of these cases to be released and to sit at the so-called Justice Department. They are doing a probe in Minneapolis Department and they did the same thing in Ferguson and they did the same thing after the 1968 riots after Dr. King was killed. At the time, it was called the Kerner Commission, and you know what they found? The people weren't just rising up because of police violence. And yes, they were angry about Dr. King, but most important, they were sick and tired of being sick and tired after all the civil rights bills passed, and America still remained as racist as ever. And it was only the next year that they killed Fred Hampton. Continuing and escalating the struggle, the people's level of organization is the only way to counter the forces seeking to use the Chauvin ver verdict as a victory for democracy. We need to continue the rebellion and draw the right lessons. Rebellions influence the state power, but do not change who holds it. Revolutions change who holds the power to determine what is done. Yep. And to 
make revolution, which is the precursor and necessary component to achieve the abolition of police, means that we need revolutionaries. When they steal an Adam Toledo or Dante Wright from us, we need to make sure as hell that we raise two Fred Hamptons. For each Micaiah Brandt, we need three Asadas. Micaiah Brandt deserves a new system. One in which black girls are nurtured and protected, not murdered for asking for help. And we will not stop fighting against a racist system that murders our children. Justice isn't one convicted cop. Justice is when police tear 